sit around. Ah, Representative Jim Clyburn is joining us. Thank you, Mr. Clyburn, for being here today. Um, we would love to have you say a few words if you'd be willing. And where's Willie? Did he? Did you manage to get over here without Willie? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Great to see you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I don't usually time it this well uh, to come in and uh, go straight to the mic, but thank you so much uh, for being here, and thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, I am assuming between you and Willie, uh, I am here. Now, let me thank all of you, uh, and of course, EESI for the tremendous work and the tremendous cooperation that we've had over the last several years, working uh, in a bipartisan way uh, to deliver common sense energy initiatives uh, to uh, most especially for me, rural communities. Uh, there's one program particularly I would like to highlight just for a moment. Several years ago, uh, working with the co-ops, uh, electric co-ops in my congressional district uh, and around the state of South Carolina, uh, I came upon a little program that the co-ops had initiated the, the call Save My House, I believe is what they called it. And that program uh, was designed to assist uh, many of the members of the co-op uh, with uh, various initiatives uh, to save money on energy costs. Now, uh, I'm a member of the electric co-op. I never paid much attention to why my bill was rounded up every, every month. All I knew was every month there was always a round number. Uh, and upon investigating, because I had not always been a member of the co-op, I found out that they had this roundup program. And uh, if your bill came in, it, God forbid you would ever get a bill this low, $29.25, then it would be $30 and the 75 cents were going to this pot. And it went to everybody. And the, from that pot, you could, the members could draw money uh, to retrofit their homes. Uh, in many instances, in my part of South Carolina, in rural part of South Carolina, in many instances, those would be uh, what we call trailer homes. Uh, it, they call them now, I believe, is manufactured homes. Well, upon investigation, I thought that that's a good program. And maybe it ought to be exported. It ought to be a South Carolina export. And so working with my co-op, uh, we did come up with a program that we call Rural Energy Savings Program. I like to do things in, with rhythm. And so I kept trying to make it R-E-S-P-E-C-T. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't quite get <laughs> the full respect, the, the number. Uh, but we got the R-E-S-P, Rural Energy Savings Program. And it took us some time. Uh, but we finally got it into law and expanded that with millions of dollars. Now, uh, it passed without money for a while. We do things like that way up here. You know, you, you pass the program, you go out and tell everybody you've done something, and then it's, well, now, where's the money? So it took us some time, but we finally uh, got the Congress to agree to fund the program with your help. And I want to thank you all uh, so much for that. I don't remember. I keep telling people it took us six or seven years 
I don't know, you know, us politicians might have embellished it a little bit. I don't remember, it might have been five years, and it might have been eight. But it took us some time. Uh, but it's now up for reauthorization. And we're working very hard. I think the record has been of such that we're not going to have a difficult time uh, getting the program reauthorized. And what I have found, I've visited some of these homes, uh, and I've learned a lot about this. Uh, when you can put these aprons, that's what they call them, on the ground under these homes, or you do other retrofitting in some instances that might need a new roof, sometimes need insulation. And what we found with our experience is that some people were paying seven to $800 a month just on electricity. And upon retrofitting these homes, putting in the insulation, putting the apron on the ground underneath the home, uh, and putting on a new roof, we found that um, you could save enough money uh, to just on your electric bill to repay the loans that the co-ops were authorized to give out to their members. So we fund the program to fund the co-ops. Then the co-ops make the loans to their members. And the repayment of the loans, what we found, uh, I remember one young lady from Calhoun County, South Carolina, I would never uh, forget her. Her bill was almost $900 a month. But she borrowed the money from the co-op, put in the insulation that was needed, other retrofitting, and her monthly bill, even with the loan repayment, was two-thirds of what she was paying before, rather than 900 down to less than 600, including the repayment of the loan. This is the kind of program uh, that uh, you guys have been a part of making uh, what I think a good contribution to rule. We started out with just the homes. Uh, the first time we went back, we now brought in the businesses. So people could, uh, that own businesses uh, in rural communities could um, uh, also use the program. I'm very high on using innovations. I always say, that we can be no more, nor can we be in the list than what our experiences allow us to be. And I do think that programs like this come from experiences. If I had not been out there uh, among these citizens, I would not uh, have been able to really steal from the co-ops uh, this idea, turn it into a national program, uh, and make it what it is today. And I want to thank you all for that. And there are other uh, kinds of programs out there waiting for you uh, to be innovative and to do uh, what is necessary to improve the lives of people uh, in this great country of ours. I always say that uh, this country is in no need of being made great. It is great. What we've got to do is figure out the ways and means to make this country's greatness accessible and affordable for all of its citizens. That is what should be our objectives. And so when we reauthorize this program, we are going to try to expand it. You all have come up with some other ideas uh, about how we can make this program uh, more applicable to more people. And we are looking forward to doing that. So thank you so much. Uh, for the work that you do, and thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you today. And I would hope that as we move forward together, we will do the things that are necessary uh, to make the lives of these, well, I call them, in many instances, young people living in rural communities. And the reason I focus on them is because I'm a great believer 
uh, President Biden said something in his uh, uh, speech the other day uh, that has stuck with me, that anyone ought to be able to say where they are from and to stay where they are from. When I grew up, graduated college in South Carolina, 82% of my class, 82% of my college class left the state of South Carolina. This was 1961. What does that do? It increases the wealth gap in such a way it cannot be repaired. If all those who got college degrees leave, then it means that those rural communities from which they come, many of them, you ask them where they were from, they will say Charleston. But you talk to them long enough, they're from Guatemala Island, not wanting to say where they are from. And the moment they graduate college, they leave, not wanting to stay where they're from. These kinds of programs allow people to be proud to say where they're from and honored to stay where they're from. And I'll thank you so much for it. Thank you, Mr. Clyburn. Great to see you today. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. Thank you. Thanks for your, um, thanks for joining us today. It means a lot for you to make time out of your busy day, and thanks for your leadership on the Rural Energy Savings Act. It's a thrill to work with you in your office on that, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're feeling good about it, too. Thank you, very Thank you sir, for joining us today.